By mid-2008, these old-school buildings, which originally belonged to St Genevieve's High School and then the former La Salle Boys School, were demolished. Behind the last of the tall spiked railings and barbed wire fence that remained in place for almost 20 years unfolds an incredible history whose chapters are largely written in letters splattered with tears and blood and brutality. Hugh Moreland was the first pupil through La Salle doors on September 5, 1966. He was welcomed by Father Cunningham, who was instrumental in building the school. Also present that day was the first headmaster, Brother Cornelius, another character who is said to have led the school through the most difficult and turbulent times in its history. These early images of St Genevieve's and La Salle have now made way for a building reputedly equipped and prepared for the 21st century. The new school, however, is called De La Salle College and was officially opened by the Education Minister, Katrina Ryan, on 12th of May 2008. The main entrance here, which has wheelchair access, plasma screens and energy-saving lighting, stands in stark contrast to the high steps, green tiled pillars and speck-coloured marble floors that characterised the foyer of the original building. In fact, this new development brings together the junior and senior schools into one facility and features over 10,000 square metres of target flooring, including a stunning motif of the school badge replicated at every junction in the corridors of the first and second floors. Efficiency has been woven into the very fabric of this building to make it cleaner, greener and easier to maintain. There's even this official chapel on the ground floor. At the back is a statue of a Lasallian brother in typical pose as he teaches and provides guidance to a pupil who is shown to be attentive, demonstrated by the open book. The following rooms lead into the canteen and assembly hall. In another case, La Salle was well renowned for its drama shows and expertly choreographed events, initiated by Mickey O'Hara and carried on by Sean O'Doherty so it's with great anticipation to see whether this tradition will continue into the future. Since opening, La Salle Boys has always been seen as part of the community. In the beginning, when funds were short, there existed a bingo committee, consisting of representatives of the parents and the local community. The regular Friday and Saturday night bingo sessions helped to contribute to the funds of the school, but also helped to develop the sense of our school within the local community. In the opposite wing of the building is the crafts and design subjects, again aptly modernised and fitted out with all safety measures in place. A sweeping set of stairs leads up to classrooms on the first and second floors. There's even a lift which pupils are permitted to use and no bellboy in sight. This work of art by the artist Noel Connor is made from the wooden floor reclaimed from the library of the demolished building. Noel was one of the first enrolled pupils, and the inscribed names here belong to his former classmates. Classrooms along this corridor tend to be geared for computing and technical subjects. Gone are the days when floppy disks and computer classes often stalled for a lack of proper investment. Nowadays, this new building has provided an opportunity to create an ICT-rich environment where there will be clusters of wireless laptops provided for the use of pupils, as well as a number of ICT suites. Teachers will be provided with a tablet wireless PC, which in effect will be a teaching and learning pod. This will allow them to bring a huge range of resources electronically to the classroom, as well as carry out administration tasks. The number of pupils who enrolled in those first years was a measly 275, although this quickly jumped to 552 by 1968, and until today, where it has reached over 1,200. Arriving at this point was no mean task, though. Up on the second floor are the science labs and more computer rooms. Also here is the staff room and library. Another highly significant area, where La Salle performed with distinction, has always been in sports. A few personalities come to mind, such as Sean McGorty, who coached hurling, Malachi Donaghy in soccer, Tony Byrne in gymnastics, and Danny Fulton in basketball. 
When the troubles broke out in 1969, West Belfast was turned into a war zone as people lost their homes, streets were torched and riots became the norm. Brother Cornelius faced an uphill struggle. When Catholic families sought refuge, he opened its doors to them, transforming the gym and assembly hall into a temporary residence. A short while after, the British Army moved in to set up camp in August 1972. It even had the bizarre honour of being named Silver City. During this period, two caretakers who had the inevitable task of cleaning up were Davy Smith and Matt Quinn, both fondly remembered for their legendary wit and humour. To conclude though, the success of this development is measured by the very fact that 43 years later the La Salian ethos is still thriving today, and with a completely new school, De La Salle College is well set for the digital age.